into the dust. Okay, so it's a new year and that means the time has come to take stock and look back at the year 2024 in archaeology. Because as the year is beginning and those New Year's resolutions are already falling by the wayside, we might as well look back and see what the top achievements were last year in archaeology and resolve to at least try to top them. So I am going to give you the first half of my top 10 list for the most amazing archaeological discoveries of 2024. And if you think I've left something out or made a mistake, please leave a comment below because I'm limited by what's present in the international media where English is more or less the lingua franca. We are so poor. We do not even have a language. Just a stupid accent. All right, so here goes the first half of my top 10 in no particular order. Number one, lost cities in the Amazon. So as everyone knows, there were never any major cities or civilizations in the Amazon region. Wrong! <laughs> Well, that was the previous belief, but a new study has upended all of that. A team of researchers has conducted a massive LIDAR survey of the Opano Valley in Ecuador, revealing a complex network of roads, structures, and earthworks. LIDAR, as we know, can look beneath trees and foliage, and in this case, it revealed a lot going on beneath the forest. In this case, lots and lots of platforms and ruins of structures. And in this case, the research team didn't just rely on the aerial imagery, but also conducted targeted on the ground surveys of some of the particular sites of interest. The dating information they collected indicated that this city was built about 2,500 years ago. So that's right around the period of Greek antiquity and lasted for about a thousand years through several phases of occupation. All in all, about 6,000 earthen mounds were found, and these were surrounded by agricultural fields and drainage systems. And as for those roads, the largest one was 33 feet or 10 meters across and six to 12 miles or 10 to 20 kilometers long. So, this was a major slap in the face to all the naysayers and probably will usher in more projects to explore the underexplored and underappreciated archaeology of the Amazon basin. Number two, oldest cave art ever found identified in Indonesia. Now, most of the really famous, really old cave art seems to come from Europe, probably because that's where a lot of the Neanderthals were. And we've explored some of it on this very channel. For example, the Cosquet Cave, which is now underwater near Marseille. We did a site visit there. The earliest of those images dates back to 27,000 years ago. There's also the Lascaux Cave in southern France as well. Now that's covered with 600 images, and some of those same in images or very similar ones can also be found in the Cosquet Cave because those two caves did uh, have some period of overlap in which they were used. However, these two famous European caves turn out to be mere babies, <laughs> as a new study has identified a much older cave art found as far away from Europe as can be. How old? Well, at least twice as old as those baby cave paintings in Europe, at approximately 51,200 years old. This story takes us all the way to the opposite end of the globe at Sulawesi, officially the craziest shaped island in the world. Now these cave paintings at a place called Liang Karampuang have been known about for some time, and they were previously dated to 43,900 years old using a type of uranium series dating. Now we're not gonna go too deep into the weeds, but like radiocarbon dating, which we've discussed, uranium series dating is a measurement of the half-life of decay, but instead of using carbon like radiocarbon dating, it uses an isotope of uranium, hence uranium series dating. Well, duh. But this technique is specific to calcium carbonate, which is essentially limestone and coral. They have the same chemical makeup. 
Now, as we know, limestone is perfect for making those caves with all those stalactites and stalagmites that accumulate over time as the mineral accumulates in very, very thin layers very slowly. And in this case, a new type of uranium series dating was used, which supposedly is more accurate at measuring those very, very thin layers of calcite deposits. And that's just what the team dated, those thin layers that formed over the cave paintings. So by finding out the age of the layers, they could find out when the cave paintings would have been last made. And this method raised the age of the paintings by 7,300 years, from 43,900 years old to 51,200 years old. So this study right here establishes these cave painters in Indonesia as the very first cave artists ever identified. The birth of the artists came the inevitable afterbirth, the critic. <laughs> Number three, human Neanderthal mixing. So we know though we might be different species, Humans and Neanderthals have been known to have had relations. Hey. Hey. And a new study reveals when exactly that might have happened. Now behind all of this are a couple of ancient DNA studies uh, of different populations in Eurasia and Europe. And these focus on specific strands of DNA which are known to have been inherited from Neanderthals. Of course, this has all been made possible by the huge proliferation of ancient genome studies that have been done. And in fact, in this case, the Asi et al. study used 59 ancient genomes that were sequenced, ranging in age from 45,000 years old to 2,200 years old. And both of these studies independently came to a pretty narrow window for when this intermingling would have happened. One of them said the human Neanderthal mixing happened 47,000 years ago and lasted for about 7,000 years, the other 45,000 years ago lasting for about 5,000 years. And that date range reflects something we often forget. It's not as if Neanderthals just passed humans a package of DNA one time. But in fact, uh, DNA was passed back and forth as these two populations live side by side and intermingled for a very long time, as we saw in one study earlier this year. Moreover, there have been places identified on the human genome where there really just isn't Neanderthal material. Remember, modern human genomes are about 1% to 2% on average uh, made up of Neanderthal material. That's uh, less for Africans in general and more for East Asians. Now, these areas without any Neanderthal uh, genetic material are known as DNA deserts. Now, based on these studies, when they looked at very, very old human beings, they found that these DNA deserts where there was no Neanderthal material were established pretty quickly during and after the intermingling. Now, what this suggests is that if uh, Neanderthal DNA did make it into those DNA deserts, what it would have done is probably been fatal to the people, meaning people really couldn't survive with that uh, particular sequence of Neanderthal DNA. So the offspring with it either didn't come to term or died in youth and were not able to reproduce. Survival of the fit, only the strong survive. Yeah. Yeah. So human Neanderthal mixing was a good thing because it produced us modern humans, but in some places, not so much. Number four. AI used to identify previously unrecognized geoglyphs in Peru. Now, even as we know from pop culture, Peru is an archeological treasure trove. This is due in part to the colorful cultures that have inhabited that region, as well as the high and dry climactic conditions in the Andes, which are perfect for preservation. So we've got perfectly preserved mummified people, high altitude cities like Machu Picchu, a tradition of purposely elongated skulls used to great effect in Hollywood, although interpretations of that last one vary widely. Mayan, he's speaking Mayan. 
Anyway, one of the nation's more famous archaeological features are those enormous geoglyphs, which are not readily apparent through the naked eye on the ground, but which can be seen from the air. Known as the Nazca Lines, these giant designs number in the hundreds, 430 to be exact, covering an area of approximately 450 square kilometers or 174 square miles. They are about 250 miles or 400 kilometers south of the capital of Lima and were created over a thousand year period from approximately 500 BC to 500 AD. Created by making incisions into the land and filling them with different colored dirt and rocks, the figures depicted are mostly zoomorphic and natural shapes, so like spiders, birds, monkeys, lizards, trees, etc. Given the elaborate nature of these designs, their utter lack of a utilitarian purpose, and the amount of sheer skill and labor that would have gone into creating them, they're assumed to have some kind of a ritual purpose. And you can take a drink. So in yet another amazing archaeological application of AI, a team of researchers fed aerial imagery into an AI tool that was trained to recognize patterns in the soil not readily recognizable to the human eye. And what they found astounded them. 303 additional geoglyphs depicting a whole range of subject matter, including humanoid figures, decapitated heads, domesticated animals like llamas, birds, fish, etc. They supplemented the aerial survey to on-the-ground visits to some of these sites, a project which took 1,440 additional labor hours. Talk about getting your steps in. With all these new amazing tools that science is giving us, AI, advanced imagery, ancient DNA, you can see how much it's transforming archaeology. There's just an innumerable amount of secrets out there waiting to be discovered right under our very noses. Number five, Reindeer Hunter Wall. Finally, in honor of Christmas, we have a story about reindeer. Sort of, anyway. Because after all, it's just past the holiday season, and who doesn't love Christmas? Who gives a f about the good Christmas? Recently, a team from the University of Kiel was conducting an underwater survey of the Bay of Mecklenburg using hydroacoustics, which is basically sonar. And they noticed something really strange, a long, unnatural-looking row of big stones that were placed in a line about six miles or 10 kilometers off the shore in 20 meters or about 70 feet of water. Shaped like a flattened S and running for about six tenths of a mile or one kilometer, the structure immediately raised the curiosity of the researchers who decided to investigate further. Once they saw this thing up close, the researchers knew that this thing had to be man-made, as Mother Nature would not have piled up that many stones all in a straight row like that. And how many stones would that be? 1,673 to be exact, most of which weighed under 100 kilos or about 220 pounds, though the wall did incorporate a natural boulder that was approximately the size of seven sedan-sized cars. And how old was this thing? Well, the area had been flooded by the melting of the glaciers after the last ice age about 8,500 years ago, so that would be the minimum possible age. However, radiocarbon dating of wood samples from the site indicated an age of about 10,000 years, putting it squarely in the Mesolithic era and making it perhaps the oldest large megalithic structure in Europe. And its purpose? Well, you can hold your beer here because we are going to be avoiding the dreaded R word. This wall actually had a practical purpose. At about a meter or 3.3 feet high, the wall would have served as a perfect hunting platform, essentially a place where animals could have been herded or chased or corralled against it, and then hunters would have been lying in wait on top to strike the unsuspecting animals. And what animals would those have been? Well, back in the day, when it was much colder, those would have been reindeer. And we actually see this in ancient cave art as well. 
So this was the place where our ancient ancestors essentially got to butcher Rudolph. And I bet that future studies may go looking around for some bones if they're perhaps preserved there. Now, I know that puts a little bit of a damper on the holiday spirit, but the holidays are over and hey, everyone's got to eat. So as this study shows, both today and a really long time ago, humankind really does like to build walls. It's just something that we do. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. All right, so there you go. Five discoveries that changed archaeology in 2024. Stay tuned to the second half next week. Hey, if you like what you heard, give me that thumbs up below, hit that bell to subscribe, or if you want to support more independent archaeology content, consider contributing to my Patreon, where you can enjoy some exclusive members-only benefits and other goodies. Until the next dig.